So we're going to continue our presentations on ratio analysis. Ratio analysis is really important uh, uh, as far as um, financial statements analysis is concerned. So what happens is uh, we're moving on to uh, an area of the course where you will be looking at accounting statements for a few companies and uh, using that information you will be analyzing certain companies and thinking about if they are worthwhile investing in those uh, companies or not. So um, <clears throat> ratio analysis helps us understand the numbers and understand uh, what the company is suggesting if it's accurate or not or how far uh, we can uh, get uh, uh, information, how much information we can get on those companies. So what is ratio analysis? Ratio analysis is the use of various ratios to analyze financial statements. As I mentioned, financial statements are accounting reports or statements and we're not going to learn how to create those statements or, or how to come up with those numbers in this class. That is uh, uh, the topic of accounting. In this uh, uh, course we talk about or we learn about how to use those numbers uh, and how to analyze the data that already exists. So in ratio analysis we will compare those numbers taken from financial statements of different companies or for the same company but from different years. Um, and ratio analysis practically indicates the success, failure, and progress of a business. So uh, why use ratio analysis? Because it enables uh, us to spot the business's trends. It enables us to compare its performance with the average performance of the industry, uh, similar to when you compare your own marks to the average of the class. So you have to look at uh, where that company stands in, the, in that industry that they belong to. They also compare, uh, it also helps us compare the performance of a company from one year to the next or to the previous years. Uh, it is again similar to how you would compare your marks from one year to, to the next or the previous. So it helps us really understand has the company, has the business improved or have they deteriorated in their financial standing. There are many, many categories of ratios, but uh, in this presentation we will cover the, uh, these three. We will look at liquidity ratios, profitability ratios, and solvency ratios. Uh, so what happens is in, a liquidity in the liquidity ratios, we are measuring the ability uh, of um, a company to meet its short-term and long-term liabilities. So there are certain short-term liabilities that a company has to meet. For example, they must pay all their uh, short-term loans on time, all their accounts payables on time. Accounts payables are those uh, things that they owe others. For example, their suppliers or their, um, uh, uh, their vendors such as telephone companies and internet companies and so on. So if they can pay all of those or not, the profitability ratios show the ability of a company to get a return uh, on the investment that the owners have made. So remember that people are investing, so that means that they own a part of the company. So how much, how effectively are those amounts being used by businesses? What kind of return can the owners expect? And then the solvency ratios measure if the company can hold its debt obligations without going bankrupt. So the amount of money that they have borrowed, can they pay it back in a reasonable time and fashion without going into bankruptcy. So each of these three categories, we're going to explore three different uh, ratios within each category. So liquidity ratios, uh, the three main ones that we're going to look at are, the first one is working capital. So working capital is really uh, um, not a full ratio, it actually gives you a dollar amount. So basically working capital uh, uh, is, is trying to tell you um, how much, if you have current assets that are more than your current liabilities. So current assets include such items as cash, accounts receivables, inventories, and uh, investments. So those are your current assets. Are they more than your current liabilities? Current liabilities would be accounts payable and short-term loans, um, and any wages or salaries that you owe your employees. 
So those kind of things, are they more than your, are, are assets, current assets more than your current liabilities? If it is a positive number, it is obviously a good thing. If it is a negative number, that means that in the short term, you don't have enough working capital, so you may need to borrow money to pay off the money that you've already borrowed, which is not such a pleasant thing to think about. Uh, so that is the, the, the one of the main ones to look at when we're looking at liquidity. Uh, the second one, which is a ratio, uh, basically you take the current assets, divide that by the current liabilities. So if it if the number is um, if the number is more than one, that means you have more current assets than current liabilities, which is a, uh, a positive sign. Uh, the third ratio in the liquidity ratios is the quick ratio. So you take quick assets and divide it by current liabilities. Now, what is the difference between, a cur uh, between current assets and quick assets? The difference is that the quick assets do not include inventories. So they do not include anything that you have purchased to sell, such as a furniture store buying furniture to sell the furniture. So that would be their inventory because they have purchased them to resell. So quick assets do not include that. This is a more of a, uh, a harder ratio to look at, harder in the sense that the company may not have more quick assets than uh, current liabilities. However, they should all think about aspiring towards having uh, more quick assets than, they, than their current liabilities. Because in a time of hardship, uh, you may not be able to sell all your inventory on time. And that's why you need to have at least um, a good amount of quick assets. Then we turn our attention to profitability ratios. We have three ratios that we have to think about or look at for this presentation. Profit margin is the first one. It, this is very simple to understand. You take your net income. So your net income is all your income after you've paid your expenses, <coughs> divided by the revenue that you have generated in the business and you multiply that by 100 to come up with a percentage. So this amount needs to be a good amount in order for you to be attracted to this business. If a business is only making 2% a year, uh, that's probably not the best ideal situation because you can make 2% by putting money into a bank account and by not taking any risk. In this case, you are taking risk as an investor, so you should be able to, com be, you should be compensated for that risk and uh, uh, the profit margin should be around 10-15% for more, a lot of companies. Return on assets. So this measures the amount of money that the assets is making for the business. So have the, the managers, the management, the executives of the business, have they made good decisions in, make, in uh, putting money into assets? If they have purchased buildings and cars and boats, are they making money for the business? Or is it not worthwhile investment, so they should come out of those assets. So net income divided by total assets times 100. So again, this gives you a percentage, and this should be, as I mentioned, 10, 15% as, as well, for, uh, similar to the profit margin. Uh, but management needs to, to continually evaluate, are they making the right decisions? Return on equity is net income divided by the equity of the business, the owner's equity or the shareholder's equity times 100. So this again gives a percentage. And again here, this tells you if the management of the company is making good use of the money that the owners have put in in the business. If they are not making good use of the money, then perhaps you need to rethink your strategy as an investor. Again, 10 to 15% is a good amount, uh, but the higher any of these numbers are, the better it is. Uh, if, if you have profit margin, return on asset, and return on equity, if these numbers are 50-60%, that is amazing. But uh, you'll hardly find businesses uh, who can consistently make that kind of profit margins. The third set of ratios are solvency ratios. So in the solvency ratio, you're looking at the fact how much debt has the company accumulated, and can they reasonably pay that debt off without negatively affecting the, um, the equity of the company. So you look at debt to equity ratio, which is total liabilities divided by the shareholders' equity. Remember the shareholders' equity is what the shareholders have put in into the business. So there are two types of money that comes into the business. Either the shareholders put in the money or the company borrows it from someone. So those are the two areas 
that that cash comes to the company as far as um, other than uh, customers because customers are giving you revenue so in the, the two areas uh, that we look at uh, if they can if they can if they have invested wisely or if they have borrowed wisely is to take the liabilities and divide them by the equity so the lower this number the better it is because that means you have less liabilities than equity and uh, chances are that you are less prone to risk if you have less liabilities I've seen some small businesses where there is absolutely no liability where they have no liabilities all of it is their money the individuals monies so that is uh, something that you need to think about is that a good thing or not you can draw your own conclusions the second solvency ratio is the total is a debt to assets ratio so the liabilities that you have borrowed have you invested them wisely has that money gone into a good set of uh, assets is that making money for you so again the less the less the uh, number the, the lower the number the better it is for the business uh, and the third solvency ratio is interest coverage ratio so this tells us uh, 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 it, it um, is derived by uh, taking EBIT divided by interest expense what is EBIT? EBIT stands for earnings before interest and taxes earnings before interest and taxes and you take that divided by interest expense this tells us that um, how much interest are we paying to cover our liabilities and do we, are we making enough money uh, from the interest that we are paying or the, the, the money that we have borrowed so in a high interest environment you will also obviously have a higher interest expense but you've got to manage that will you have enough money to manage your interest expense as times go by uh, this is more important in a time where the interest rates are high uh, these years interest rates are low so uh, the companies can manage more loans because they have to pay less interest okay so closing remarks basically there are three main groups of ratios that we have covered liquidity profitability and solvency ratios a good business should be liquid profitable and solvent so you can see that they all three good set, all three ratio sets should represent a good picture um, for for a business however for a vast vast majority of businesses you will find that you'll have some good ratios and some not so good ratios so you have to draw a conclusion is this business worthwhile uh, uh, with your investment or not should you even take a second look at it should you if you own shares already in it should you sell the shares or the same thing applies to, for your clients if you are an advisor or for your company if you are working in a company in the finance area ratio analysis enables the business to spot trends over the last 5 10 15 years and can also draw conclusions for the next 15 20 years comparing ratios for successive years may provide insight into how the business is doing it is critical to properly interpret ratios you've got to think about this numbers give you numbers but if you don't understand how the numbers can be used then you don't really you cannot really analyze those numbers even though it is not the only form of financial analysis ratio analysis definitely is a key step in understanding businesses so uh, those are the reasons why we study ratio analysis and uh, we will continue to look at ratio analysis over the next couple of weeks using different forms uh, so uh, uh, we have looked at these three forms of ratios there are definitely many different categories if you are interested you can definitely research on the other categories of ratios and see uh, if they make sense to you so thank you for listening